Excellent. Thank you. And thank everyone and for for attending and thank the uh, organizer uh, for having me uh, here today. So this is um, a, uh, a joint work with Yukon from University of Rochester and Wang Yi, um, who is a PhD student at uh, UC Irvine. So, so the idea of this paper is we try to understand the, the relationship between the technology, um, the cryptocurrency they use, and their valuation. So the motivation uh, about uh, about this um, about this paper is is uh, as follows. And uh, some of you from the audience may already uh, aware of that. That you know, um, we all maybe you heard from news. Um, that the, the blockchain technology really getting really uh, popular and, and has been one of the most critical uh, innovation in recent decades, right, from the technology perspective. Um, and has been applied to many areas. Um, one of the uh, early application of blockchain technology uh, is to use blockchain technology to develop cryptocurrency. Um, so, um, you know, just want to make sure everyone uh, are on the same floor, the cryptocurrency is a digital currency stored and transferred through these blockchains, right? Example would it be Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera. Um, so some of you maybe know that there's a lot of cryptocurrencies, uh, actually way more than um, even we can count. Uh, then today, uh, the, there are more than 20,000 cryptos right you know we can def we, we can argue about in how we should how should we what if definition we should use for cryptocurrency but um uh, you know if we define broadly and we just come to everyone um there's there are more than twenty thousand, and the market cap is already over one trillion dollar so it, it's pretty um it's still uh, smaller than the uh, store market but it's pretty sizable if you think about, you know, it, it has only been around, uh, you know, about uh, more than more than ten, maybe more than ten years. So it's definitely a uh, kind of one of the new phenomena that got a lot of attention nowadays. Um, there has quite a bit of debate about, you know, the uh, cryptocurrency and the blockchain technology. Right. So the um, the, um, the the what 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 what's the debate is about is actually um, uh, is about only one hand the block so people uh, think that you know the blockchain technology which behind the crypto is uh, very revolutionary and uh, people believe this is new internet uh, here I caught uh, just just uh, had a smash up of a couple of news article. Uh, when they mention about new um, about blockchain technology, you can see they are very positive. They are really enthusiastic about these blockchain technologies. There's even a, a TV show called Startup uh, about the about the blockchain technology crypto as well. However, um, there's also growing concern uh, and criticism on crypto as well, um, um, what, what, which is also have good reason, right? and. Uh, um, for some of you may be aware that there's indeed a lot of you know scam um, and speculations and also you can see there's you know the many of the crypto price increase dramatically and uh, and, and, and drop um, dramatically too and which often refer as a bubble uh, patterns right so so that's kind of the uh, the kind of the the debate is about right so when uh, in summary, when people talk about Bitcoin, there's a lot of, you know, you know, uh, criticized about that or crypto in general. But when people talk about the technology behind uh, cryptos, it's often very positive. Right? So the question now in this paper we want to try to understand is that um, the blockchain technology behind, uh, so the kind of the, in the one central question we want to uh, address in this paper is that where the technology matters for cryptocurrency valuations, All right? So what we do is we we then the where the technology of cryptocurrency affect the valuation, um, which is not easy. Um, uh, it's pretty challenging. Uh, 
because measuring the technology aspect of crypto uh, is uh, is hard and crypto is very different from uh, a traditional assets such as stocks because there are not many information uh, available now that's that's the problem right um they do not really have let's say accounting uh, accounting statement etc so what we do is we focus on one self disclosure which is uh for for many of them not each of them for 80 percent of these coins when they um then do their uh, ico's initial coin offering they usually provide a so-called white papers okay? so what the white paper do is it describe and um, you know many aspects of the crypto especially you know what type of technology they use how they're going to use that in their business and why their business uh, matters and it's all why this good business idea to give to 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 create that coin so what we do is that and of course text text data is also not um you know necessarily easy to handle so what we do is we use uh, a machine learning method, which is uh, called word embedding, to construct a tech index. Uh, in early version of the paper, we also had you know LDA uh, and also supervised machine learning as well. I mean we still have it right as robustly checked, but just want to give you uh, give you a um, broad idea that also we choose one method to be to focus on the paper, but we also and try other methods as well, and the result is pretty robust. So what um, we do is, sorry. Sorry, I have a Go question. So, so here, when you say you're constructing this text index using word embedding, it's on the white paper itself, right? It's not on, let's say, their GitHub page, uh, like their GitHub history or something, but uh, the white papers. Yeah, yeah, we only white papers. Yeah, we focus on white papers, yes. Okay. Um, there, I, I think there's another uh, question in the, in the Q&A. Sorry, I couldn't see. Oh, okay, I can I, I can uh, let you know. So the question I, is, what do you mean by uh, valuation? Um, intrinsic value or people's belief? Well, I will be more clear. We, we are very simple. So um, so we, we study this question from finance perspective. So we just look at stock price. Uh, sorry, crypto price. We we don't we don't uh, we don't dig into whether it's intrinsic value or not. We just look at the uh, what is what's the realized uh, uh, crypto price. Okay, now um, so this is kind of you know uh, what do we do in general. Now let me give you a little bit of preview of the results, uh, and then I'm gonna get into the details. So what we do is the um, uh, we found that cryptos with high tech index are more likely to succeed in the sense they are more likely to raise fundings listed on crypto exchanges during the initial coin offerings, and these the, these ones are also less likely to be delisted from exchange, and they they tend to be have uh, also better performance in the long run. Uh, that's what we fun so what what do we so to conclude we find overall the technology is important driving force for for crypto valuation okay, that's kind of the, the conclusion so now let, let's get into a little bit about the details also before that i would like to talk about uh what the uh, the contribution of this paper um this paper contributes to three strands of literature uh, first we contribute to um uh, a theor the, the theor theoretical literature about digital coin. This is relatively um, uh, young literature, um, just compared to other ones, well, uh, other crypto literature as well. Um, there are several well uh, established theory and uh, well circulated papers. Um, many of these models, they do emphasize that technology is very crucial in understanding cryptos. In, 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 in their frameworks. Um, however, there's kind of, um, they, but however, there's, there's a little empirical evidence uh, to test these kind of idea. So the contribution of this paper is that we provide a novel measure um, and new empirical evidence on this, uh, on the importance of technology 
for crypto. Of course, not, we are not the first empirical paper to study crypto or ICOs. There's a couple of papers are already there. And, and pre, the, this paper document that they found that, you know, um, there's uh, several factors that affect crypto returns, such as momentum, analyst grading, social media, you know, as um, one of the organizers mentioned about, you know, GitHub, Twitter, and et cetera, regulation as well. So what, what this paper contributes is we provide new insight on the impact of technology on crypto valuations. So we, we kind of took a very different um, uh, perspective, right? So we focus on the technology aspect. More broadly, this paper contributed to text analysis in finance or economics. Um, so this literature is relatively young too. Uh, there's a couple of papers that look at, you know, um, you, how to use news article, online reviews, um, and to study in the stock returns, right? And myself actually have a couple of people in this area as well. Um, so what, what uh, the contribution of this paper is we are one of the first to use machine learning to study crypto documentations. So this is the, uh, the main contribution. Right? So hopefully that, you know, this put everyone, you know, uh, on the same page about what has been done and what was new in the paper. Now let's dig into details about how we construct these, uh, how to calculate the data, how to construct these measures. So for our research, uh, we what we focus on is we focus about two years period. We just recently actually update the sample to to uh, to to uh, to more recent sample period. We haven't we have the main result done, but haven't really. Uh, uh, kind of you know update draft yet so still a little bit uh you know th but the sample period is also very good in the sense that it is a booming period for the uh, for crypto market so to the to some, from 2017 to 2018 that is a booming period we got the data from track ico which has team size from writing lanes uh, where they have github page exchange we also got trading data from um, coin market cap as well we also have texture measure from the IC wire papers, right? And especially we construct the, you know, tech, tech index, but we also uh, use this IC wire paper to uh, construct some more uh, also regular, uh, regular available for, you know, people uh, use for crypto, uh, sorry, for tech analysis, readability, time and uncertainty as well. So the tech index we, we, we use is, we use unsupervised machine learning as, Okay, word embedding to construct the tech index from white papers. Now you may wonder why not use the supervised machine learning. We actually, in fact, we also tried the supervised machine learning. We found a similar result, but we still believe that the unsupervised machine learning method here is more proper here because what happened is that you know um, the crypto and blockchain technologies are relatively new uh, to to research and to most or everyone, and we have limited knowledge. So the, uh, the, uh, the, the advantage of unsupervised machine learning is it requires little human input, right? And we just let the machine tells us uh, what, 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 what's going on in the data rather than put a, a strong prior about what we want looking for uh, to begin with. So let me tell a little bit about the word embedding. Uh, it's pretty popular. Uh, it's most, one of the most popular uh, word representation methods in, in, in natural language processing. So the intuition of what the embedding essentially is, is as following. Okay. So it cares a lot about the meaning of a word that can be inferred from the context. So the words appearing in a similar context will have very similar meanings. Right? So essentially that's kind of the idea. And um, as I mentioned before, again, it's robust to use LDA, which is another uh, uh, unsurprised machine learning method to find a topic, topic modeling methods. And then, uh, as well as supervised machine learning mess. Now, let me give you a little bit uh, more details how we how we do that. Okay, so how we do the uh, word embedding. So uh, in the first step, we apply word embedding to map words to numerical vectors. Right. Think about um, so those ultimate goal of text analysis or natural language processing is we need to find a way to uh, convert these word-based uh, uh, word variable 
to numerical variable. Now, the first step is we want to convert them to numer numerical uh, vectors. Right? Here's an example, right? So here's kind of, you know, different. Uh, so what do we do in the second step is we, uh, so here's the, the, uh, this vector space. And then in the second step is we use k-means, which is a way to cluster words in, in different topics. Yeah? So in, in our case, we have two, 20 topics. And uh, we do uh, document in the paper about for in different settings, the number of optimal topics is very different. In the paper, we do document that we find a way that there's kind of you know, a scientific way to select what is the optimal number of topic for each project. So in our project, the optimal number of topic is 20. So here is an example about how the k has been applied. As you can see, here's a couple of, uh, couple of uh, one, two, three, five, five topics here. Um, uh, in, in, in the data, we have to have, uh, have 20. Okay? So as you can see, uh, in the second step, we group these uh, group these words into kind of different topics. Now, this is in the third step is once we get the 20 topics, right? Um, now we need to understand which topics are about technology, right? So there are different ways to do that. And we use two methods, which is pretty standard techniques in the industry literature. The first method is hierarchical, uh, hierarchical clustering based on the semantic similarity between topics. So this method has been used in Barbie et al. as well. So as you can see, we find different topics that have very similar meanings. And uh, as you can see from the graph, um, we have three um, topics that stands out, we believe is very similar to, uh, very close to uh, the topic is about technologies, right? It's captured different aspects of technology, but it's about technologies in, in this setting. One topic is blockchain. Another topic is system. The other topic is information, right? So they believe they, they belong to the, uh, the same cluster. Now we do, we use these three topics as, uh, as kind of our tech index, right? So that's kind of the, the uh, another method that we use is just kind of double check, you know, we, it's called multi-dimensional scaling. Um, this, this, uh, which is a dimension, dimensionality reduction algorithm, right? Um, again, as you can see, these three purple circles, they tend to show up in the same area, right? Which means that they tend to be clustered together. Again, these three topics, uh, these three topics uh, are, are what we call uh, the tech index. So now the, the, the tech index itself, essentially uh, in a simple, uh, kind of let me describe it in a simple way is that is the percentage of words that belong to these uh, three topics, right? So think about it, you have to break down uh, uh, the other white papers, right? Let's say the white paper has 10,000 words. And then um, uh, if 20% of these, these words belong to these three topics, then the, ten, the tech index is gonna be 20% for that particular cryptos. So that's how the tech index is. And also that's how we kind of convert the, the text data to numerical data, right? The text data is kind of a, a whole document. Now after converting to numerical data, the number is 20% in this, uh, in this simple, simple example. So this I, is actually how the text analysis has been done, yes. Um, <clears throat> sorry, can I ask two questions? One is um, if um, when, and in, the, in the first step when we are doing uh, NLP there, um, is there any baseline or um, benchmark we can compare to how this um, NLP it's 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 performing? Um, so let me go into the first in here. Uh, no, sorry, the, the the even the previous one. 
uh, yeah, ex ex exactly. Like, how do we, when, when we're coming up with these 20s, do we have a good idea of how good they're, they're measuring the, the topics mentioned? Oh, yeah, I think this is, so this is the, uh, so this is kind of, um, how do we choose topics? There's different, this is like important, right? These are important parameters we have to play with. So what, uh, a common way uh, is there's, there's, there's different ways to, to, to choose to different topics. So one way is you can just use eyeball. What simple method is like, I, you know, use eyeball method to select the number of topics came in class three. As you can see here, is the algorithm suggests 20 topics to be the optimal of topics, right? We have all, all algorithm to choose like how many topics we need. So this is kind of uh, one method to, to to kind of look at that, right? So that's kind of a, a mathematical way to to choose number of topics, like you know, how they are doing. Yeah, that's kind of, and it is, this is often uh, very subjective to the the COP, right? Different like, COP means the, the doc documentation, the pool of documentations. So I have other projects that also use the um, this type of different topic modeling. Then in that settings, um, then maybe we only have 10 topics. Well, on some of my courses, you know, we have other projects as well. In that setting, they have, have 70 topics. So so in, in the sense that, you know, uh, I think your question is very relevant in the sense that when, when you start a project, when you have a kind of a pool of text data, you have to analyze. Every time you have to, uh, we do all these estimation, which takes very, a lot of time actually. You see a simple graph here, but it takes a lot of time to do the, uh, to find out what's the optimal number of topics to, 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 to extract uh, for each project. That part actually is uh, one of the most time consuming part for, for this project. Hope that answered the question. Yep, thank you. So the, so, now let me kind of now what we are where are we now? Um, so essentially now after kind of you know getting the topics, we identify in this case three topics that we believe is related to technology. So we construct this tech index based on these three topics. Now the you may wonder right uh, about um, the kind of back to the motivation. Um, you know this technology index can capture you know something about the technology aspect of the cryptos. But the question is like, you know, uh, how this read the crypto performance. Um, so what we do is we look at uh, different measures you know, of performance. The very big, uh, the very um, first um, uh, measure we look at is so-called success, right? So when, when the crypto um, want to raise funding, um, so they need to, you know, get it from, you know, the investors. So a common measure whether the, you know the crypto perform well or, or not is whether they can successfully raise funding or not. Another measure is that you know um, whether you can be listed on crypto exchange as well. So anyway, in the paper we have both measures. Now in 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 the slides we have we focus on uh, whether you got listed on crypto exchanges. So unlike stocks, like if other stocks they if stocks they got uh, they uh, um, go to public, uh, all the stock will be listed on exchanges, right? But this is not the case for cryptos. So only the one, I be, in general, only the one that are doing relatively well will be uh, listed on crypto exchanges. That's why uh, in the literature or in, in, in the industry, um, people often believe that the, the fact that, that you, know, you got listed in crypto itself uh, is a measure of success. So what we are doing here is we the success essentially is a dummy variable, right? If you got listed in crypto changes, then um, there is one. Um, of course, we include a bunch of you know control variables that has to be documented in the literature. There's a long list of control variables. And then we also include a bunch of fixed effect quarterly and a different category and also geographic uh, as well, because the crypto is uh, all, all over the place in different countries. And as you can see, so this is, sorry, this is like, you know, we have, this is measure. This equation I only mentioned about succeed, but in the result, we have both 
capitalized and regardless of trading as well. Okay. So we can see that the coefficient on the tech index is positive and significant, right? Doesn't matter which measure we use to measure succeed. And um, this means that if, you're, if these cryptos, they have a higher tech index, then they actually tend to have, they have a higher chance to succeed, right? Either by raise more funding or, or more likely to get funding or more likely to get listed on crypto exchanges. So magnitude is pretty large and just want to try to put the number in perspective. So for example, one standard deviation uh, uh, increase in the tech index can lead to a, a, a listing probability about 4.8 uh, percentage, which is pretty large in, if you think about the mean, which is 80% of the mean. So this is pretty sizable magnitude. And we also look at uh, industry subsample. We find that there's stronger relationship in in, in uh, industry that, that te te technological component is more uh, more important, right? So that's more kind of one of the, another result that we, we have as well. I have a question. Um, yes, do you, go ahead. Do you control for the length of the white paper? Um, not here, but we do control the tongue, the fog index, the tongue and uncertainty. But in certain, Regression, not this regression, but in some of the version we try. Um, oh, I think we have this ICO. Um, sorry, the documentation lens not here, but in certain version we tried before, we have something like that. Yes. Because one thing I was thinking, it's potentially you know the the, the papers that are let's say longer um, mm. would have potentially will have um, a, a lower index because they, they potentially are discussing techno, uh, technical details with equations or whatever. Um, but then a shorter paper potentially could have a uh, higher index just by by design. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. I think we had a um, version look at the, uh, the lens and also there's version look at um, the size, the document size itself. Right, not necessarily lens, right? If it has mm -hmm. pictures, right, you know, it has, you know, the size itself maybe matters. But 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 we do have versions come to that and the real is pretty uh, it's pretty similar. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh there's are by the way, there's two questions in the QA. Um the first one uh, says, is there anything we can compare this index to some other measurements to check its robustness? Yeah, that's an excellent point. So I I I I, I, I mean uh, in just time, in, I haven't checked that, but we do validate this measure by looking at measures, uh, other measures that may be related to also capture tech index. Uh, one one thing we look at is we 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 uh, we, we we actually collected a lot of data about uh, crypto's uh, GitHub pages information. Uh, let me maybe let's hold on that. I'm going to talk about that later on. We do have the result on the slides. I, I can, we will find the, cool. we do kind of validate this measure for sure, yes. And then uh, there's the second question is, what are control variables, uh, var what are control variables and fixed effects included in this analysis? Why not treat it as random? Um, so, so this, let me put this over here. Okay, so I, maybe I flip too fast. So the control variables include, you know, these bunch. Of, I'm not going to, you know, read all of these variables, but these are pretty common control variables that in the literature and has been documented that they do matter, uh, for, you know, for ICO success. The fixed effect we do include the quarterly and, you know, uh, categorical, and because you know maybe it's crypto, maybe it's healthcare, maybe it's finance, etc. And we also have geographical fixed effects. Um, so these, you know, the idea of having this fixed effect is just we want to make sure that you know um, there are uh, these um, uh, um, uh, we have to control for these unobservable time invariant factors maybe potentially driving this result. So that's it. But as you can see, we do have one let's say column one, column three. We do uh, not include any control variable or any fixed effect. 
right in this case. So this this will give you kind of also idea about the uh, uh, about what it's looking like. But again, it doesn't really matter, you know, whether we have control variables or fixed effect. The result is pretty robust. It's pretty robust. Thank you. All right. Now the other other result that people often find, uh, you know, uh, are interest is about the performance of these uh, cryptos, right? In, especially in long run, in short run, right? From the invest perspective, right? You know, I'm not sure uh, whether some of you maybe invest in crypto space, you know, of course, definitely you, you know, maybe care about the, where the crypto price increase, decrease from the invest perspective. So what we do is we calculate rate of return for these cryptos. Um, then we calculate the returns uh, over different horizons, right? And seven days, 30 days, and 90 days. Now, when we look at this type of windows, we found that the cryptos have a high tech index to not necessarily actually have a high return. Right? So, however, if we expand the horizon to 800 days, 240 days, 300 days. And we do find that, you know, the coefficient uh, on tech index become statistically significant. It's positive and statistically significant. Okay. What does this mean? This means that in long run, this, these cryptos that have a higher tech index, they tend to uh, actually have better performance than the uh, other cryptos. Okay. So the 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 um, kind of what's the implication from this result? The implication is that it seems that the investors they do not recognize cryptos uh, right away. Uh, it takes time for them to uh, figure out which one's good, which one's bad. So it's it can be you know behavioral or, or rational story here. Um, but later on, I will give you a little more evidence on. On, on this direction. We also look at the liquidity, which is about trade volume and across board. And trade volume is always actually higher for cryptos that have high tech index. They do actually attract more trade volumes, not necessarily affecting the returns, but they do get more trade volumes. Doesn't matter whether it's short, uh, short run or, uh, or long run. Another important aspect to look at is um, delisting and um, uh, maybe you know uh, uh, you know this uh, fact or not in general crypto delisting actually happen more often than uh, than stocks okay and uh, of course you know if some of these cryptos have got have got involved in some scam fraud etc this these these cryptos are more likely or maybe automatically will have got delisted this actually happened quite uh, often in this uh, crypto, excuse me, crypto space. Um, so now, so a next question is that where the um, tech index play low here, and we found that um, indeed, you know, the crypto have tech index uh, have high tech index are more sorted in the sense that they have they are less likely to get delisted. Right, the coefficient on tech index is negative, right? And the dependent variable here is the delisting probability. So it's they are less likely to get delisted. So this means, I mean, the magnitude is pretty large too. And one standard deviation change actually leads to, um, leads to about 20% of average of the decreasing in delisting probability. So this is pretty sizable, uh, sizable, uh, sizable effect. So this is kind of, you know, again, this result is, is is, is consistent with our return result in the sense that it seems that these cryptos have high tech index do seem to be better ones, right? Because they are less likely to get the delisted. We have another do... question. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. In the QA, um, they say, is there concern of selection um, given the decrease of obs obs observation? No, that's that's very is... important. That's very important. Yeah, that's very important. So we do um so a lot of these observation uh, reducing 
is due to two reasons. One reason is uh, when we combine with different cryptos, and then many of them, um, so they do not really have data across all different uh, platforms. It's one of the reason. Another reason is that look at this uh, is that when we have different uh, invest horizons, return horizon, trading horizons. Um, the problem is that many of the, them are very relatively young, right? Relatively young. And also we only have two years of sample period. So this uh, kind of you know, create a constraints. Um, so that's why in an updated version of the paper, uh, we now have a long sample period, uh, help mitigate this concern. But having said that, uh, the, the sample size in this paper is pretty comparable to the uh, other studies that study cryptos. So for new subjective, we, uh, we often suffer from this issue, right? The data availability issue, right? It's relatively new, the short sample period, the sample period is short, and then it's, it's, it's relatively, yeah. So now when there's selection bias or not, uh, um, I think there's certainly some selection bias to some degrees, but I think the question is about how should we think about the selection bias? Does this result I'm presenting here present the a lower bound or upper bound, right? If the result presented is a lower bound, then there's a less constant. If the result is present a upper bound, then there's more likely a concern about that. So I believe that in this case, the result presented here is actually more likely to be low bound or actually random. There's no evidence that, you know, the fact that whether a, a, a crypto, you know, whether they got delisted in the long in the sample period, they, for whatever reason, they don't have data in different, uh, in some platform has a, a, a very negative or positive correlation with the tech index. Right, I don't think there's systematic evidence of that. So in that case, maybe it's random, right? Or in the case that you know the fact that the sample is relatively uh, uh, small, and 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 I believe that the result prevail here because the statistical power is smaller, right? Once you have small sample, so imagine that we have a big sample, whatever reason, because the availability improve, etc. I would expect that we would even see stronger result. Uh, with a big sample. Hope this answers your question. Okay, now let me uh, provide a little bit more uh, results uh, about um, about uh, uh, why um, we see the uh, pattern we observe uh, in these returns. Um, so um, one explanation is delay reaction. It takes time for investors to react to technical information from white papers, right? You know, it's just that, you know, uh, these crypto stuff is just very hard to understand. It takes time for people to, you know, to realize, you know, which one's good, which one's bad. Um, so we do actually present two tests. One test is, let me show you the uh, results, the reaction results. So what we do is we look at the if, Indeed, it is about, you know, um, it, because the fact that tech index is relatively, uh, sorry, take crypto white paper is hard to understand. We, what we do is that we uh, split the sample into some documents is relatively easy to understand relatively. So I personally read through about um, three or 400 white papers by myself, um, excuse me. And I found that there's big variations. There's definitely some document is relatively easy to understand. There's certainly some document is very, very hard to understand. It's full of code and mass equations. Definitely not necessarily easy for a regular investors. So what we do is we split um, these, um, these, there's measure, right? There's a way we can measure whether this document is easy to read or not, which is kind of so-called readability measure. So what we do is we split the sample um, and into two. One group of uh, uh, document is relatively easy to understand, while other ones is relatively hard to understand. 
So what do we, what do we, the prediction is that, you know, uh, it takes time for investor, uh, sorry, if the explanation is it takes time for investor to react, um, the prediction would, would it be that the crypto with easy to read white paper will be experienced in delays, delay, delay the reactions, right? And indeed, that's exactly what we found. So the, the coefficient on the interaction term is negative and significant. So this is exactly uh, uh, consistent with the hypothesis, right? So we also look at, you know, um, where the crypto have high tech index maybe have more on the pricing during the ICO. I believe we also have this split up as well. Um, so this, we look at the on the pricing as well. So this is the measure. And we found that, so the logic here is that if it takes time for investor to um, react to the white paper information, crypto with high tech index may be more underpriced during the uh, ICOs. And, and so the prediction is that, you know, we would expect the uh, positive coefficient on tech index. And indeed, this is the case. We do, that's what we found actually. Um, so again, this is another piece of evidence support the uh, the crypt um, the delay reactions the other other one is that maybe invest overreaction uh, to the information in the sense that investment may overreact to technique tech, uh, technology uh, you know aspect of crypto leading to the result of the return probabilities right you know there's theory actually the behavioral literature showing that invest overreact to fundamentals can lead to overvaluation of assets and the resulting vibe um, bubble-like phenomenon. And we do have a test for that. You know, one test to do that is, let me look at, let me show this overreaction. So the, uh, so the um, you know, um, so test we do is uh, often a people, a uh, way to do this is whether we observe a reversal or not. Okay? So we look at returns and we look at different uh, horizons, even longer than the other period. However, we do not, reversal means that the, the coefficient on the tech index will be opposite, right? And essentially, if the, the, the price of crypto is not priced correctly, and because of the overreaction of investors, eventually the price will either, you know, will be corrected, right? You know, if it's, it's, it's originally overpriced, it then it's gonna be going down. If it's underpriced, it's gonna go up eventually in, in, in sufficiently longer summer period, which means that uh, if there's reversal um, there, the coefficient on the tech index will be um, the opposite uh, as what we observed previously. However, as you can see here, the coefficient on the tech index is still positive across different uh, you know, investment horizons. So there's no, evidence that there's a long-term reversal. So we can, overall, we do not really uh, find evidence to support this um, overreaction story, All right? So we do have additional results and about from ALDA. Now I do want to kind of give you an uh, idea about, uh, I, I've seen some of students, some of the audience ask questions we do have a so-called host risk test with other tech measures, which is we do collect a lot of information from um, from the um, the GitHub from GitHub. Okay, so what we do is we do a kind of a host risk with that. We do one of this GitHub measure is is the commits. So the GitHub will for all the code this year, you know. Um, there were uh, uh, one of the measures commits, which is uh, has been widely used in the literature to kind of uh, link to the you know uh, the tech, tech aspect of cryptos. We do find that you know if we use this measure from GitHub, it's also positive, significant affect the returns. All right, even if we use simple word count. Okay, sorry, I think this go back to the organized question about the lens the length of the document, we actually have this measure in this gear. So the word count itself capture the, the, uh, the, the length of the, uh, uh, the, the documentation. We now have actually, we have this test in, still have the test in the paper. As you can see, both of these measures positive the 
related to the return, the performance, right? Now, what really matter more is, what if we put everything together, right? All put it, it's horse race, right? We put all of them in one regression, which one actually uh, can survive? This is exactly what uh, column six doing here, right? If we put everything, all of these measures, the one from GitHub, the, the one about the documentation lens we put there, um, actually we found that the our tech index remains positive and uh, significant. The, the measure from GitHub do remain positive significant, but I think does not really uh, affect all measure at all. So it captures just capture different uh, aspect of the tech index of tech technology of the cryptos, right? So um, that's kind of the uh, um, that's kind of the uh, the kind of of course we have additional robustness test as well. Um, and one of the thing we did I do want to mention briefly is that given that there are so many cryptos that are delisted, you know, kind of related to the selection bias uh, uh, comments, we do. Uh, measure or return in a different way to deal with this delisting, delisting uh, returns. We found a way to deal with that and the result is actually pretty, uh, pretty robust. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm actually almost on time. I have one minute left, let me conclude. So what do we do here? We, in this paper, we use machine learning technique to try to understand uh, the technology aspect of these cryptos. We use machine learning to construct tech-based tech index, uh, we use relatively comprehensive uh, white papers. The size, the sample is pretty sizable. And what we found is that technology is important driving force for crypto valuations. We found that the ICO with the white papers, high tech index are more likely to succeed, less likely to be delisted, and uh, they're more likely to have long, better long term performance, although short term performance is not necessarily affected. Um, so definitely this paper is one of the first efforts to conduct a comprehensive tech analysis of ICO white papers. I do believe there's quite a bit of room in this research area. So I do encourage people in the audience to join us to do more research in, in this area. Thank you. Um, I look forward to any additional question you may have.